Good morning and welcome. I'm Dr. Susie Macaluso, and I'm the director of the Pruitt Gerontology Center at Abilene Christian University. This morning, I would like to talk to you about the effects of the pandemic on our older adult church members. In this talk today, I will be speaking about the general effects of the pandemic on older adults, and then I would love to share some of my own findings from my research that I did in October of 2020 that was really more about church life in general during the pandemic. Each year, the Gerontological Society of America publishes trend reports that summarize research and policy on aging that has been important in the previous year. Unsurprisingly, the 2020 report is filled with information on the effects of COVID-19 on older adults, and we can use that information to get a sense of what older church members have gone through over the last 14 months or so. So without further ado, let's dive on into the research. So if there's anything that this pandemic has taught us, it's that it's a small world after all. A virus that was first found halfway across the globe quickly spread like wildfire and upended all of our lives. While we've all had to make adjustments this year and find a new sense of normal, this disease has impacted some groups far more than others. Like most natural disasters, COVID-19 has been much more lethal for older people and people of color. Let's take a look at some of the statistics. On this slide, you'll see COVID-19 deaths sorted by age group. And this data was taken from the Centers for Disease Control on May 26th, 2021. So what you can see here is that nearly eight out of every 10 people who has died from COVID-19 has been over the age of 65. And then those aged 50, 45 to 64 make up the other, another 17.5% of those who have passed away. And those under 45, they make up just 2.7% of those who have died. Now, everyone has been affected by COVID-19, but the disease is more lethal to older adults. And that has a lot to do the, with the physical sides of aging and the way that our immune systems change as we age. Our immune systems are a bit more robust when we are younger. Um, we don't know all of the causes and all of the links here. We'll know that in time. But what's important to understand is that for older adults, this disease is more life-threatening and has posed more of a threat in their lives. One of the things that appeared early on in the pandemic was blatant ageism. There was this pervasive idea that since COVID-19 only killed older people, younger people should go about their lives and older adults should seclude themselves or sacrifice themselves for the good of the economy. This is not a helpful way of thinking. Ageism, it's not new in our society. We see it just about everywhere, from our media, to our churches, to our public policy. We assume that older adults don't have as much to give to society. And even in our churches, we assume that older adults have nothing left to offer the church. And so we focus all of our attention on other demographics within the body. This is ageism. Ageism is a really interesting type of discrimination. It's an ism like racism or sexism, um, but it's interesting in that it's actually a bias against our future selves. Let's take that in. When we act in ageist ways, we're actually acting against our own future best interests. Ageism is something that we will all experience should we be so lucky to live into old age. And ageism is really important because our world demographics are shifting. Two thirds of all people who have ever lived past the age of 50, they're alive right now. That's crazy. And that's really thanks in large part to modern medicine. The average life expectancy in the United States has nearly doubled since the turn of the, 19th, uh, the 20th century. At the beginning of the 20th century in 1900, we had around 46 years with the average life expectancy for men. And then now in 2020, 2021, the average life expectancy for men is right around 80 years old. And it's even higher for women. So what do we do with this changing demographic? How can we adjust and be more nimble to serve these older adults who are making up a larger and larger proportion of our population, particularly here in the United States? 
So rather than shuttling older members off to the margins of society and our churches, we should be harnessing their experience and wisdom and taking that experience and wisdom and using it to best serve the church and to best um, bring the message of Christ to the world. Ah, but I digress. This is not related to COVID directly, but not only has COVID-19 uncovered the deep-seated ageism in our society, but the measures needed to flatten the curve and slow the spread of the disease, those were borne disproportionately by older members of society. Most notably were the effects of social distancing and isolation. While churches have gotten really creative with the way that they navigate social distancing from parking lot gatherings, backyard church, to Zoom church and virtual worship, churches have really lived out the idea that church is not a building or a place, but a spirit and a people. And for this, I am profoundly grateful. I have loved personally being able to interact with other members of my congregation and to be able to see all of their faces over Zoom on Sunday mornings. But many of these efforts have the unintended consequence of excluding some of our older members. Not all, but some. I'm going to talk a little bit about isolation and its effects on older adults, particularly during the pandemic. According to Seifert and Cotton in a research paper that was published in the Journals of Gerontology in March of 2021, the COVID-19 pandemic has excluded older adults from a society based on physical social contact. Vulnerable populations like older adults also tend to be excluded from digital services because they opt not to use the internet, lack necessary devices and network connectivity, or inexperience using the technology. Older adults who are frail and are not online, many of them who, many of whom are in long-term care facilities, they struggle with the double burden of social and digital exclusion. So what the authors are talking about here is the way that the pandemic has been um, additionally burdensome for older adults. And quite honestly, anyone who doesn't have access to uh, the digital world and technology. And part of this, um, this technological uh, burden is borne by older adults because they simply have not wanted to participate in the online world. It's not that they're not capable or able, um, it's because they've chosen not to kind of step into that space. In the United States, it's about 27% of individuals aged 65 years and older still don't use the internet at all. Um, now, even if older adults do use the internet, they may do so in more basic ways than younger age groups. Many older adults prefer to have in-person interaction and phone communication. As a result, older adults risk feeling doubly excluded, first from physical contact and second by digital exclusion from a digitally dominated society. So all of these wonderful changes that churches have made have been absolutely fantastic for those of us who speak digital tech, right? For me, who's coming to you through this screen instead of in person. This is easy for me. This is something that I do every day. I have all the technology available to me because I'm a faculty member at a large university. But for others who aren't as comfortable with digital technology, they may have been resistant, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, to lean into the digital technologies, hoping instead to just wait things out. But then as we know, things got worse before they got better. So what can we learn from this? The current pandemic should first serve as a reminder of the existing digital divide and the fact that some older adults, as well as other groups, are excluded from a digitally connected society. Second, it should also be viewed as an opportunity to bring all the generations together by helping bridge the digital divide. Furthermore, this should highlight the importance of not creating a new form of ageism with people who use the internet having sovereignty over digital information. Older adults who are not using the internet or digital online services during this pandemic should not be viewed as frail and unwilling to use those digital offers. Rather, their decisions should be respected and alternatives should be employed, such as writing letters whenever possible. 
So what we learned from this research is that we are seeing the creation of a new ageism that not only values younger people over older people, but values those with digital technology and with digital know-how over those who choose not to participate in online spaces. And I think this is really important because this isn't just speaking about age, although the two are highly correlated. This is also speaking to poverty and those who live in rural areas where they don't have access to high speed broadband internet access. And so those groups are also being excluded when we think about creating this digital world. All right, so those are some of the early research findings coming out this spring. But how has the pandemic affected the older members of our churches? So in May of 2020, I worked with several churches to help them assess how their members were handling the pandemic and what steps their church should move, take to move forward. Many of those churches were in the southern part of the United States, where local laws allowed churches to resume meeting with few restrictions in mid to late May 2020. Through the survey, I learned that churchgoers were struggling with social distancing and were anxious about going back to church, even though they couldn't wait for the day that they would get to. And what I found was that these, um, these feelings were not super different between age groups. There weren't many demographic differences between those who felt strongly that they were struggling with social distancing and those who wanted to get back to life as normal as quickly as possible. What we found is that across the board, people were having a hard time and feeling anxious about what was going on. So in May, I also did a national survey of churchgoers. I took the, um, I got information from SurveyMonkey and used their audience um, targeting techniques. Um, and I looked at churchgoers from all religious backgrounds. And what I found, again, there weren't too many differences in feelings of anxiety or a desire to meet again based on age. However, I did, decided to repeat the study in October, given how much had changed over the summer and how varied the responses had been from churches, um, with some churches meeting in person, with no changes, to others who were still meeting solely online. So I wanted to see how that shift back to in-person worship was affecting older adults in our communities. So first I looked at age differences. For many of the questions on the survey, I compared responses across many demographics, including age. I ran correlations between age and the difficulty of the pandemic and how well the congregation was handling the pandemic. And the results, they were somewhat interesting. What we found uh, in doing a analysis of variance is when we look at this by age group, on the question or on the statement, Dealing with social distancing, isolation, and limited limitations of the COVID-19 pandemic has been difficult for me, with one representing strongly disagree and five representing strongly agree. What we find is that most people are in the middle, leaning towards agree. It's been challenging. Um, what we see is that there's not a clear linear relationship between age and how difficult the pandemic has been. The pandemic has been more difficult for younger age groups. So those age 18 to 29 and 30 to 44. And it seems that our, our people who are over the age of 60 seem to be handling things the best, or at least that's what they report. So those age 18 to 29, they were more likely than the oldest group to say that they were having a difficult time. These differences are not quite what we might have hypothesized, but they're still really interesting. And I think there's a reason why they're not what we might hypothesize. And I think that's because younger people tended to be more disrupted by the pandemic. I'm thinking in that 18 to 29 age group, those are a lot of college students. And I know from my experience as a college professor that the shutdown really impacted me and my students. The ways we interact, the way our semester ended, it was chaotic um, and it caused a lot of disruption. And because of that, it was especially difficult also, those in the kind of the 30 to 44 year range, those are prime ages for parenting. Again, I find myself in this age range where my kids no longer had school to go to. And in fact, I had to become the teacher. 
And so not only was I trying to navigate working from home while my spouse was also working from home, but I was also trying to be a mom and be a teacher and a daycare worker all at the same time. And so those first few months were absolutely disruptive and chaotic. And I had a really difficult time um, handling the pandemic because I was so used to being around people all day long, every day especially in the classroom. When I'd regularly be in a classroom with 40 students, all talking and having conversation. And another thing that happens between older adults and younger adults on surveys is that older people tend to be more positive overall in survey research. And I think also for older adults, they've seen a lot during their time. And in fact, in some of the open-ended comments on the survey, we had older adults saying, I lived through various wars. I've seen hard things. And while this is tough, we'll survive this. So there was this sense of, I've already been through a lot in my life. So this, I've got this. But also remember, this is October. The worst was still yet to come. Next, I had two statements about how well the congregation was doing to meet the needs of the members. First, the statement was, my congregation has done an excellent job of connecting with members over the past few months. And then the second statement was, my congregation has done an excellent job of encouraging members over the past few months. Again, this ranges from one to five, strongly disagree to strongly agree. And so let's take a look at the connecting with statement first. Here we find kind of a similar pattern where we have this U shape where younger and older adults are on the lower side and those in the middle age ranges are up a little bit. So for those age 18 to 29, they were more likely than their oldest counterparts to say that the congregation was doing a good job, um, but not quite as high. And then in encouraging, we can see that it's flipped. So the youngest age cohort, the 18 to 29 year olds, they rated this lower than all of the other age cohorts. So on these questions, the difference is we're once again statistically significant, and that's important, um, but we see a different response to those two questions or two statements. Younger churchgoers seem to feel like they were able to connect a little more than older members. And I think this has a lot to do with technology use and social media. So when I think about connections, a lot of that can take place digitally. And we can have those connections through Facebook groups, through um, text threads, through Zoom church or small group meetings. And so I feel like in my case, my church did an excellent job of helping us connect because we used the Zoom platform. And so every Sunday morning, the person who was hosting the Zoom would talk to each of us by name. As we popped up on the screen in the Zoom, we would be welcomed into the meeting. And then the Zoom would stay open for a few minutes afterwards to talk and to catch up and sometimes for the kids to do a little show and tell. And so for those of us who did have access to good technology and were comfortable on the Zoom platform and could video conference in instead of just call in, it seemed great. I felt like I was truly connecting with my church family. But for those that didn't have that technology, they may have felt somewhat excluded during that time. Especially if you're calling in, you can still hear what's happening, but you don't have the same impact. Um, it's harder to participate and see who's saying what. Now on the other end, those in the older age category felt their congregation did a better job encouraging members than the youngest category. And I think this has to do with churches' efforts to reach out to older congregants in particular, through phone calls, prayer, porch conversations, backyard gatherings. I think that churches were able to recognize that older adult members needed something different. And so they reached out to them in these ways. But for younger members, they don't really like phone calls. Um, they respond to different things. And so they may have not felt quite as encouraged as older members did. So what are the implications for churches? What are we supposed to do with this information? Especially now that vaccines are available for those 12 and older and things are beginning to feel a bit more normal. What am I supposed to do with this information that's about things that have happened in the past? 
Well, what I think we need to do is we need to take what we've learned and not wait for another pandemic to begin. We need to think about how we can incorporate older adults into the digital life of our churches. How can we help them get the technology that they need to stay connected to their family and friends? How can we utilize the resources of our younger generations to help those in the older cohorts um, prepare and become more tech savvy? Again, it's not that they don't or aren't able to, it's that they don't want to or they didn't want to prior to the pandemic. They may have had a change of heart by now and they might be ready for that sort of um, relationship. And if nothing else, you're creating an, an, another opportunity for generations to interact. And whenever generations interact, you start to tear down those stereotypes and remove parts of ageism. And I think that's really important. We shouldn't be afraid of aging. Hopefully all of us will get to live a long life and experience older adulthood. And so we need to take away those stereotypes so that we have a better chance of succeeding as we age. Thank you so much for participating in this online discussion and for hearing my thoughts today. If you have any questions, I'm open to hearing from you. Um, you can contact me at jero at acu.edu or in the information provided in the slides here. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful and blessed day.